Welcome to FNM Labs. We continue our 8th grade maths topics. Hi. This is the last and final session on percentages. The last two sessions, we learned a lot of ideas and concepts regarding percentages. We saw how to calculate percentages and percentage changes. In this session, we will discuss various methods to approach different scenarios in order to solve the cases. We also have interesting cases for you to investigate. So be ready with your pen and paper. Let's do it together. Have a great fun with mathematics. Let us consider the first case, case 11. Can you find the percentage change in the cost of an article which first increases 20% and then decreases 8%? So we know change that may be increase or decrease on 100 is called percentage change. So let us assume the cost of article is 100. So the 100 is the initial cost. So we need to find the final cost. So in order to find the final cost, we can use the same direct formula here, which is cost after x percent increase and then y percent decrease is equal to initial cost into 100 plus x by 100 into 100 minus y by 100. Here x is added because it is increased and y is deducted because it is decreased. So final cost equal to 100 into 100 plus 20 by 100 into 100 minus 8 by 100. 20 is the increase percentage and 8 is the decrease percentage. So that becomes equal to 100 times 120 by 100 times 92 by 100, which is equal to 12 into 92 by 10. That is equal to 110.4. So that is the final cost. So we have the initial cost as 100. So change in cost is the difference between them, which is final cost minus initial cost, which is equal to 10.4. This change is on 100. We have taken initial cost as 100. So this is percentage change. So required percentage change is 10.4. Next case 12. In a town, suppose 5% people died due to some disease and 3% of the remaining left the town. If 276,450 people are still in the town, what was the original number of people in the town? We solve this using two methods. In the first method, we assume the initial population as 100. Now let us visualize the scenario. We represent the population using a vertical bar, the height denoting the 100%, that is total population. It is given that 5% of the people died, so the population is reduced by 5% of 100. So, the remaining population is 95%. Again, 3% of this 95 left the town. Now, the population further gets reduced to 95 minus 2.85%, which is 92.15%. Hence, the remaining population is 92.15%. But this 92.15% is given as 2,76,000. 450. We will use this information to find out the initial population. We have the formula involving decrease percentage which is remaining population is equal to initial population into 100 minus percentage people died divided by 100 into 100 minus percentage people left divided by 100. So that is equal to 100 into 100 minus 5 by 100 into 100 minus 3 by 100 which is equal to 100 into 95 by 100 into 97 by 100. 
simplifying we get 95 times 97 by 100 that is equal to 9215 by 100 so that is the remaining population when we assume the initial population as 100 this shows that if we assume initial population as 100 the remaining population is 9215 divided by 100 or the fact that the remaining population is 9215 by 100 in place initial population is 100 now we apply the unitary method here the remaining population will be 1 if initial population is 100 times 100 divided by 9215 this means remaining population is 2,76,450 implies initial population will be equal to 100 into 100 by 9215 times 276450 this calculation is based on the unitary method which we have seen earlier if you would like to refer to more details on the unitary method you can search for our session from fnm labs so this becomes 100 times 100 into 30 that is equal to 3 lakh thus the original population of the town was 3 lakh in the second method which is algebraic one we take the unknown variable x as the initial population therefore using the same formula we have remaining population is equal to we substitute x in place of initial population here so the equation becomes remaining population is equal to x times 100 minus 5 divided by 100 into 100 minus 3 by 100 that is equal to x times 95 by 100 into 97 by 100 now we know the remaining population which is given as 2,76,450 so we replace the value in the equation we get 2,76,450 is equal to x into 95 into 97 divided by 100 into 100 or bringing the term containing x on the left hand side we get x times 95 times 97 divided by 100 into 100 is equal to 2,76,450 now we have an equation involving the variable x keep x on the left hand side and bring all the values to the right hand side we have x equal to 2,76,450 times 100 into 100 divided by 95 times 97 which is equal to 3 lakh thus the original population of the town was 3 lakh which is the same value we got in the previous method next case case number 13 is for you to investigate a man bought a certain number of apples out of which 13 percent were found rotten he gave 75 percent of remaining in charity and still has 522 apples left how many had he bought try for yourself good luck and fun case number 14 if a's increase is 25 percent more than b's find how much percent b's increase is less than a's let us understand the question first there are two values a and b to make it simple let us assume both have some initial value now b's value is increased we assume this increase is 100 a's value is also increased to a level which is 25 percent above b's increase that is a's new value is now 25 percent of 100 that is equal to 25 more than b's value so a's increase is now 125 in fact we calculated all these percentages based on b's value that is 100 now the question is how much a's increase is based on a's value that is 125 in other words how much a's increase that is 125 need to be reduced 
to reach the level of B. We know it is 25, but we need to find how much percentage of 125 is 25. We will do this in two ways. Method 1 is assuming B's increase as 100. Since A's increase is 25% more than B's, A's increase equal to 100 plus 25, that is 125. This can be calculated as 100 into 100 plus 25 by 100. So if A's increase is 125, B's increase is 100. So applying the unitary method, if A's increase is 1, then B's increase must be 100 by 125. If so, what will be B's increase if we set A's increase to 100? So that can be found by multiplying by 100. So if A's increase is 100, then B's increase is 100 times 100 by 125, which is equal to 80. Therefore, B's increase is 100 minus 80. That is 20% less than A's increase. Case number 15 is for you to investigate. Harry is 20% younger than Ronald. How much percent is Ronald older than Harry? I will give you some hints. First assume Ronald's age as 100 and then find Harry's age using the given information. Now, if Harry's age is 1, what will be Ronald's age? You find it using the unitary method as we did earlier. Then find Ronald's age. If Harry's age is 100, then find the difference. The answer is 25%. Try for yourself. Good luck and fun. Case number 16. If the price of petrol is increased by 5% today, by what percent should it be decreased tomorrow to bring the price back to the original? Here, the initial price is not given. So we assume that it is 100. So after 5% increase, the price will become 105. 5% 5 of 100, that means 5 more, which is 105. Here we can see that if we assume initial price as 100, the price changes to 105. So we need to find how much percent this price 105 need to be reduced to bring it back to 100. We can see that for a change of price to 105, the initial price is 100. Therefore, applying the unitary method, for a change of price 1, the initial price would be 100 divided by 105. Divide initial price by 105. What about a change of price to 100? We can multiply the initial price by 100. Therefore, for a change of price to 100, the initial price would be 100 times 100 by 105 which is 95.2380 decimal path continues. So we take an approximated value rounded to two decimal places as 95.24. Therefore, change in price is 100 minus 95.24, which is equal to 4.76. We know this change is on 100. So 4.76% is the required percentage. So that means after the hike in price, in order to bring 105 back to 100, 4.76% of 105 has to be reduced. Case number 17. A number decreased by 23% becomes 539. Can you find the number? Here we suppose X is the number. Then after 23% decrease, the number becomes x times 100 minus 23 by 100. That is equal to x times 77 by 100. Now it is a given this is equal to 539. That means x times 77 by 100 is equal to 539. Therefore keeping x in the left hand side and bringing everything to the right hand side, we get the value of x equal to 539 times 100 by 77. Simplifying, we get the value as 700. Therefore, the required number is 700. 
And now the case for you to investigate. A number increased by 15% becomes 391. Can you find the number? Here you can assume that the number is x as we did in the previous example. Then find the number after 15% increase. Now you can equate this with the given value and the, from the equation you get you find the value of x. The answer is 340. Try for yourself. Good luck and fun. Case number 19. Two numbers are respectively 20% and 50% of a third number. What percent is the second of the first? Here the first and the second numbers are expressed in terms of third number. So we assume the third number as 100. Now given that the first number is 20%, and the second number is 50% of 100. Since it is based on 100, the values and percent are same. So this means first number is 20 and second number is 50. We need to find the percent of second of the first. That means the percent of 50 of the first. Now we know x as percent of y is x by y into 100. Applying that here, the percent of second of the first is 50 by 20 times 100, which is equal to 250. Therefore, the second number is 250% of the first. Case number 20. Two numbers are respectively 20% and 50% less than a third number. What percent is the second of the first? As in the previous case, there are two numbers which are expressed as percent of a third number. So in that case, we always take the third number as 100. Also, since these percents are based on 100, the values and percent will be the same. Now it is given that the first number is 20% less. That means the number will be 100 minus 20, which is equal to 80. Similarly, the second number is 50% less. That means it is 50. Now we need to find the percent of second, that means 50 of the first. In other words, we need to express 50 as percent of 80. So Obviously, it is 50 by 80 times 100, which is equal to 62.5. Therefore, the second number is 62.5% of the first. And it's time for you to investigate. In an election, three candidates contested and secured 29,200. 58,800 and 73,000 votes. Find the percentage of votes scored by the winning candidate. Here are some hints. We all know who gets highest number of votes wins the election. Total votes polled is the sum of votes scored by all the three. Now the question is find votes scored by the winner as percent of the total. That means the number of votes scored by the winner divided by total votes times 100. Try for yourself. Good luck and fun. Yet another case for you to investigate. In an examination, a student scored 90 out of 100 in mathematics, 60 out of 80 in science, and 40 out of 50 in social science. Find his percentage score in each subject and also on the whole here are some hints for you we need to find individual and aggregate percentage separately now each subject has got the maximum allowed marks and the marks scored by the student so individual percentage is the individual marks scored for each subject as percentage of respective subjects total. Again, to find the aggregate percentage, you need to add 
all the marks scored by all the subjects and divided by the total marks allowed for all the subjects think about it try to find yourself good luck and fun and finally we come to the last case case number 23 in a class examination 20% students failed in mathematics 30% failed in science and 10% failed in both the subjects find percentage of total failed percentage of total passed and total number of students if 30 students passed in both let us try to represent the scenario pictorially we use circle to represent students failed in mathematics we know it's 20 percent similarly another circle to represent students failed for science it is 30 percent note that both the circles overlap to denote a common area which represents those students who failed in both the subjects it is given as 10 percent so the percentages may be split to 10 percent failed for maths only 20 percent failed for science only and another 10 percent failed for both maths and science this is represented by the overlapping area now from the figure it is clear that number of students failed in mathematics is the sum of number of students failed only for mathematics and number of students failed in both therefore failed only in mathematics is equal to failed in mathematics minus failed in both that is equal to 20 percent minus 10 percent which is 10 percent in the same way failed only in science is equal to failed in science minus failed in both that is equal to 30 percent minus 10 that is equal to 20 percent we know the number of students failed in both is 10 percent therefore total failed is equal to failed only in mathematics plus failed only for science plus failed in both that is equal to 10 percent plus 20 percent plus 10 percent so total students failed is 40 percent now what about the total students passed percentage we know the total number of students passed is equal to total number of students written the exam that is 100 percent minus those failed for the exam that is equal to 100 percent minus 40 percent that is equal to 60 percent is the total passed percentage as 60 percent passed the exam which is 30 in number which is given 60 percent of the total students is equal to 30 therefore total number of students equal to 30 into 100 by 60 which is equal to 50. with that we come to the end of three session series on percentages we familiarized a number of concepts and did 20 different types of cases make a good attempt on the tryout questions given during these sessions in case any doubt don't forget to write to me at fnmlabs at gmail.com thanks for watching this session till we meet at another session have a great time and fun with mathematics